It was already lunch hour, which means it's time for Conine Crunchies in the Deerly Farm. Once the bell was rung, all the Dalmatian puppies come charging towards the silo where Nanny is getting all the crunchies out of the silo with her cycling mechanism that draws out the dog food. While all of the puppies come speeding this way, there was no one else who is more excited than Rolly. We see him ahead of the charging stampede. Rolly was running the fastest, surprisingly, yelling, lunchtime. Come to Papa. He got to the crunchies first on the spot. As the others showed up, he savors the taste as he licks his lips. Oh, boy. He replies after his gulp. Extra gravy flavor this time. I love it. He goes back to eating more of it. While that slightly hefty pup eats away, we see two familiar puppies eating between him. There was that smallest yet big-eared puppy named Cadpig and a suave cool puppy with spots that form up a horseshoe on his name, obviously named Lucky. Not only that, we see Spot the spotted farm chicken who is pecking away the crunchies with her beak near Cadpig. I sure hope this gravy isn't from a giblet. Spot commented with some concern while eating. Spot Cadpig begins to speak, I doubt they put any actual fowl to make gravy out of it. Don't you remember most flavors are artificial? Oh, you're right, Spot begins to remember the time there was that chicken-flavored conine crunchies that wasn't made from an actual hen. So they progress on with their feed. After lunchtime got expired, all the puppies had their fill and went back to their business. Roly was resting on the side of the barn, rubbing his stomach. Who, man, that was delicious, he belched. It sure was, Roly, he heard Lucky nearby. He was walking towards the barn as he says, as much as I love to have real gravy, that artificial gravy is sure making me thirsty. As soon as he begins to walk inside the barn, he tops it off by saying, too bad Anita took my bowl to the dishwasher. Artificial or real, Roly said out loud with a satisfying sigh, gravy is my holy water. He smiles warmly while rubbing his full stomach. Inside the barn, he walks past towers of hay bale as he mutters, if only the river wasn't so murky lately. I can't seem to find anything that I wash down my food. He was going past a huge pile of hay until he saw something shiny from one spot of it. Huh, he responded, looking at where the glare was. He begins to approach towards the hay pile and sees something transparent and shiny from the sun's beam. It looks like a glass bottle. What's this? He said as he reaches to what was peeping out of the straws that were covering most of it. Once he has it out, it turns out to be a glass bottle flask that has a champagne cork. Not only that, there was pink liquid inside that was bubbling still. Lucky tilts his head, wondering what it was. This looks like something Cadpig might have made, he stated, since she has been into science lately. He notices that there was a label on it but it was illegible, due to some straw gotten caught by some glue of it. The horseshoe puppy glances it, wondering what it could be. I sure hope it's something refreshing, he said, licking his dry lips, if it's some beverage that Cadpig is trying to come up, I hope it tastes good, because I'm dying to drink something. Perhaps it's strawberry or pink cherry. He begins to think that this is some soda. So he deliberately pops the cork and guzzles it down. While he consumes it, it tasted bittersweet. It has a hint of sweetness of strawberry while the bitterness seems to come from lemon. Once he finishes up that bottle, he compliments out loud, a bit bitter like lemon, but I am glad that it has some nice strawberry to it. Cadpig sure is good at coming up some soda like this one. She should run a soda company. Just then, he heard Roly coming this way. Hey, Roly, what are you doing? He asked as he notices that bottle. Founds this bottle and it seems to be some soda that Cadpig is making. Lucky answered while licking his lips, enjoying that flavor. Can I take a look at that bottle? Roly asks as he takes that bottle of from Lucky's paw. Sorry that I didn't save you any, Lucky shrugged while Roly glances at the bottle. It was bitter yet it was sweet at the same time. Just then, while Roly was noticing the straws that were covering the label, Lucky's stomach seems to gurgle and then, a small belch came out of Lucky's mouth. And quite bubbly, too, he said as some pink bubbles were about. Roly wonders what does the label say. He decides to grab as much straw as he could to remove them quickly. There were some writings. Huh, he said as he begins to remove more straws. Once he got the last handful, he gasped to see what it was written. Oh, boy, Roly mutters, which worries Lucky. What is it, Roly? The horseshoe puppy asked. From Raleigh's peers, the label was entitled, Do Not Drink, Unpredictable Testing Substance. You shouldn't have drink this, the chubby puppy said, it says that it's an untested substance that shouldn't be drunk. Oof. The puppy grunts as he holds onto his stomach. He falls on the ground, clutching on his stomach as it moans and gurgles horribly. Ack. I'm in a terrible pain. He whimpers horribly as it made Raleigh's heart pound with terror. Go get help. Moaned the poor puppy.
even thought Roly isn't much of a runner, he gets up to his feet and starts scurrying to find someone he knows that might help. He was panting as he runs off the barn to find a certain someone. If there is anyone who made something like that stuff in the bottle, it would be Cadpig. Just then, he sees Cadpig talking to Spot about something. There they are. He pants as he goes right to them. Suddenly, Spot and Cadpig heard Raleigh's bark. They turned to where that came from and they spotted him. Roly, The chicken scratched her head. What's the rush? Cadpig questions the panting, chubby mutt. He was panting, feeling a bit sweaty as he answers between breaths. Ah, no, muttered the worried sister, don't tell me he has drunk one of my projects I've set aside again. She begins to dash away to the barn. Hey, Spot squawked as she begins to run along, wait for me. As Spot run past Roly, the chubby yet exhausted puppy yells, wait. He turns around and slowly goes after them in a slow and weary pace. I haven't captured my breath yet. He pants and wheezes while trying his best to catch up. Back at the barn, we see Cadpig and Spot finally got to the entrance. She notices the bottle on the ground that Roly left. She picks it up and notices the label. Oh, no, if Lucky really did drink this, then he's, she looks forward and gasps in terror. Spot did the same when she looks ahead. What they all saw was Lucky, who is up on a hay pile with a large potbelly. He sees very queasy as well as embarrassed by being seen like this in front of his siblings. And his fine feathered friend. The weary horseshoe puppy chuckled and waves, hi, guys. Did you drink this, Lucky? Lucky's displeased sister asked him while holding the empty bottle. What did I tell you about drinking my incomplete work? You have no idea what it might do. It did something already, Lucky huffs as he mentions, I feel pretty heavy inside and yet something fuzzy is going on here. Before he knew it, Roly saw something that surprised him. Not only did it surprise the chubby one, but Lucky as well. That moment when something just kicked him from the inside. Did you see that? Roly yelled, completely shocked. I saw something moved inside Lucky. What now? The chicken reacted, looking baffled. Raleigh's right. Lucky nods as he rubs his stomach. I felt something inside that just kicked me. Wait, you don't mean that you. Before Spot could even finish, Cadpig halts her. Maybe, but I would need to examine him and not with tools, mind you. The little puppy climbs up the hay to get close to her nervous brother. She places her head on Lucky's stomach, which made her brother blush from that feeling. With those big ears of hers, Cadpig detects something going on inside him. She hears a heartbeat of something that is pretty tiny. Agad, he cooed in such shock. What is it? Roly asked as he begins to climb up the hay while Spot walks up on the hay with ease. You heard something. A palpitation of a very small, independent heart. Cadpig mutters as she still listens, not Lucky's own heart. Suddenly, she sees something poked on Lucky's side what appeared to look like a puppy's paw. Spot and Cadpig gasped when they saw his stomach jumped from that. There it is again, yelled Roly, and I felt it again, Lucky blushes. What is inside me? What's happening to me? Cadpig got her head off of his side of his stomach. She appeared to look worried and uncertain how to say this. Well, what's wrong with him? The chicken asked Cadpig. I too, saw that something has moved inside him. Cadpig bites onto her own lips, feeling pressured to inform him what is happening to him. To be honest, Lucky, she begins with those sympathetic, truthful eyes, I had no idea what it is when I started making this nine months ago. I must have forgotten all about it. It was one of my incomplete chemistry, during the time I was studying biology and life science. I didn't test it out until you got into this stuff. With the sound of a heart and seeing something kicked, I think, um. I strongly believe. Just get to the point. Yelled Lucky, not meaning to sound rude or impatient. He felt another kick again which makes him grunt. Lucky, Cadpig solemnly and grimly answers, you are pregnant. He's what? Roly yells in complete disbelief. PPP per bog -ock. Spot clucked into a stutter. Pregnant. Yelled Lucky. Me. Impossible. He felt another kick, which was a powerful one. Oof. He moans as he holds onto it, turning on the side. Apparently and technically, you are, the sorry puppy said. Because you have drank the rest of it before I test it out, I have no idea how long will this last. It could be days or even weeks. Even months or years. Roly blurted that out. Roly. Cadpig whispered harshly at him. Lucky appears to look more worried hearing that. Sorry, the round puppy muttered with some guilt. Just then, a loud rumble is heard from Lucky's. Stomach. What's happening now? Yelled Lucky. All of the sudden, this stomach begins to grow. Off shoot. Yelled Roly, freaking out, he's growing. He's gonna explode. He begins to panic as he jumps behind the nearest hay bale. XPP plode. Spot reacts as he begins to squawk and cluck like crazy as she flaps her wings. 
She runs to where Roly was hiding as some feather came out of her. Catpig was the only one seeing this as she backs off from Lucky's body. From what was once a big potbelly, Lucky's stomach begins to swell up. It was making his arms and legs spread out as it suddenly stops. His body was now a size of a big beach ball. You can come out, Catpig called him, he didn't explode. He just grew. Roly slowly looks at Lucky's body. His face was priceless, I guess, dot you are lucky, he said, with a slight pun. Not funny, Roly, barked Lucky. Suddenly, he felt three kicks and they were tough ones. Oof, he grunts, feeling like as if he is going to explode. The others begin to see that there were more than one babies inside him. They all began to feel sorry for Lucky. The only one who is the most sorry out of them is Lucky. He ought to know better than the drink something that he doesn't know. You know, guys. He begins to choke up, I am so sorry. I'm sorry for drinking that potion, Catpig. I thought it was some Kool-Aid or soda you were trying to concoct. My water bowl is in the dishwater lately. Sorry for yelling at you, Roly. I, his eyes begin to fill with tears. I don't know what else is going to happen to me. He begins to bellow into tears. Hey, hey, it's okay, Roly said, trying to cheer him up. He then begins to think. Noticing that Lucky is much bigger than him or the pig who is the mayor, he wonders if this would do something to make Lucky feel supported. Roly would go up to Lucky and rub his belly. Roly, what are you d? Lucky was about to ask him, but that sensation was taking over him like a warm blanket. That rubbing was starting to make him feel a bit better. Tears dry away as he suddenly begins to pant happily. Even thought his tail is sticking out on the side, it was wagging a lot. Cadpig and Spot noticed that Lucky is recovering from his periodic sadness. You feeling better? Roly asked. I sure am, the pleasured puppy said, keep rubbing me. Hey, you guys, come join with me. It's really fun and his body is so nice and fuzzy. Roly said. Might as well, Cadpig said. Like what to expect from a pregnant animal, attention is always required 24-7. She and the chicken joined in and begins to rub different parts of Lucky's body. With more of them rubbing him, he howls with glee from this sensation. In fact, when Roly scratched it, it made his leg kick. This made Roly smile warmly. Maybe it's not that bad after all, Roly said. Had to admit Cadpig begins to add in, still ongoing with the rubbing. Never knew this would happen, but my own brother is like a living teddy bear if bigger. Too much fun I must say, spot clucked, but I like it. I love staying like this for a long time, barked the pregnant puppy happily. That wish was not going to happen his water breaks. Lucky's face begins to redden. Roly then stops rubbing and so did Cadpig and spot. Um, that wasn't me. I'm housebroken, Roly said. Roly. Cadpig yells in a more concerned voice. It's lucky. His water broke. The eggs are ready to hatch. Squawked the chicken. Help me. Yelled the poor lucky. As all the puppies inside begin to fuss around like crazy. It was like a bar fight in his stomach. What are we going to do? Roly said, sounding a bit scared. This may sound weird, but. Cadpig said seriously, we got to help lucky deliver. Roly made a cringed expression as if this might lead to something very awkward. Yeesh, that sounds weird, Roly muttered in disgust. Lucky howls in pain while the contraction is still intact. But we've got to help him. Squawked the nervous hen. Cadpig looks at the chubby puppy, giving him an order. Roly, you hold on to Lucky's front paw to let out that physical stress. Okay. Roly said, placing his paw on Lucky's paw. Spot, you help me with holding the babies while I help Lucky with this delivery part, the sister informed the chicken. Spot clucked in agreement with a salute. She they all went down to Lucky's bottom as Cadpig yells, try to breath, Lucky. She tells the poor puppy. Breathe. Lucky breathes in and out, trying his best to calm down while getting ready for Cadpig's order. Okay, now push. She yells. Lucky grunts as he dig, grabbing hard on Raleigh's paw. Raleigh's face was like he plowed into the food bowl hard again while falling from the sky. Push. Yelled Cadpig, which Lucky did it again while sweating like mad. And as he pushed again, the harder his grip. Roly was feeling a lot of pain in his hand. After 25 minutes of pushing and grunting, it was finally over with a total of 15 newborn puppies. Cadpig and Spot were holding on of the young Dalmatian babies that were already asleep. Roly was nursing his paw after being squeezed very hard more than once which might affect his blood circulation. For Lucky, he was all messy and exhausted. He had some fat on his body, but he was holding some of his babies. He had tears in his eyes while seeing them snuggle onto him. Roly just kept shaking his paw to get blood back circulating. But then, he felt one puppy behind him. A small baby one, who wanted someone to hold him. 
Rowley would pick him up with the uninjured paw. As he did, he feels the pup snuggling onto his chubby chest. It made Raleigh's heart melt. Rowley looks at Lucky. The chubby puppy smiles at that proud mother, 15 puppies, Catpig smiled while caressing on with lots of spots on its stomach. Just like our mother. You're gonna make one heck of a good parent, Lucky. And you still are with that name of yours. Rowley positively complimented. This might take me a long time to be a good parent, Lucky admits, but I am so into this raising a family thing already. You really think so, Lucky? Catpig asks, but notices that Lucky was too distracted with his happiness. Lucky. Lucky. Lucky, wake up. Just then, he opened his eyes. Everything was all blurry for a moment until it finally focuses. Lucky sees Cadpig, Spot, and Rolly looking at him. He's awake, the chicken said. The horseshoe puppy notices that he is on the same hay pile, but notices that he is normal again. All slim and smooth and not a single pound on him. It all turned out that it was some weird yet heartwarming dream. He then sighs with relief, phew, it never happened after all. But then, he frowns a bit with disappointment, ah, and if only raising kids was a true thing. Are you okay, Lucky? The chubby puppy asked him with concern, you were out like a candle as soon as you took a nap on this hay pile. Raising kids. Cadpig scratched her head in confusion. Oh, it's nothing. Lucky decides to drop that topic. Just some nonsensical dream. The trio looked at each other, feeling a bit baffled of what is he talking about. But then, something reminded Rolly. Oh, Lucky, I just remembered, he begins to explain, while you were napping, Anita just had your bowl all nice and clean. He the points his paw over to the right and there was his water bowl. She had it filled with clean water. Oh, goody, Lucky smiled as he gets up, now to wash my lunch down with it. Must have been the extra gravy that gave me some weird dream. As soon as he walks towards it the others looked at each other. Raising. Cadpig starts first. A family. Spot proceed. Him. Rolly added the question. Lucky finally got to his bowl, drinking away. As he got as much water as he needed, he sighs with liquid satisfaction. Ah, much better. He then wipes his lips and begins to think. You know. He begins to talk to himself out loud, some way, when I get married and have a mate, I would love to raise more than 15 puppies. Just like mama. I may not be the one to bear them, but I would be better off as a father than a mother. He winks at the audience as the iris went out. The end.